all of us gathered here should never forget the famous admonition of the iconic Jamaican reggae star Peter Tosh when he said, and I quote, don't care where you come from. As long as you're a black man, you're an African. President of the Republic of Ghana is an extraordinary man. He shares our vision that economics and education will fuel the rebirth of the African diaspora that the people of America, teeming with the motherland, Africa, will create new wealth new opportunities for our generation and generations beyond. Mr. President has traveled worldwide. He's got extensive background, both as an executive in different levels, an administrator, uh, he's legislated. He has the complete package that has prepared him to lead the proud country of Ghana in the manner in which he's been able to, to date. I want you to come, sir, as we reach out to you, knowing that the competency, knowing that the confidence that we have in you and for you is such that we know we cannot fail at this mission. Please join me in welcoming the President of the Republic of Ghana, the Honorable Akufu Adido. I'm privileged and honored to be here with you, the National Black Caucus of State Legislatures of the United States of America, and for the opportunity to deliver this speech, which has allowed my mother's self to tread in the footsteps of some of black America's notable figures who have spoken from this platform. The caucus has grown to acquire a formidable reputation and has become an influential voice of advocacy in America for the African-American community. And I'm grateful that Honorable Representative Billy Mitchell, President of the National Black Caucus of State Legislatures, decided to make me part of this year's events. My first encounter as President of the Republic of Ghana with a group of black legislators from the United States was in 2018 in Washington, D.C with members of the Congressional Black Caucus. And it was at this meeting that I declared the following year, 2019, as the year of return. Subsequent to that meeting, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives, led in 2019 a powerful congressional delegation to Ghana, which included Congressman Jim Clyburn, House Majority Whip and now Chairperson of the House Select Committee on the Coronavirus Crisis, Congressman Gregory Meeks, now Chairperson of the Foreign Affairs, the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congresswoman Karen Bass, now Chair of the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittee on Africa, Global Health, Global Human Rights, and international organizations, and the late legendary Congressman John Lewis to join us in the year-long event. She was given the honor of addressing the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. It was our hope that the year of return would be a joyful and learning experience all around for all of us on the African continent and our kith and kin from the diaspora, especially 
in affirming our determination that never again should the African peoples permit themselves to be subjected to such dehumanizing conditions. <laughs> Sold into slavery and have their freedoms curtailed. It proved to be just that. And I'm hopeful that this conference will serve as another catalyst to help ensure that Africans and persons of African descent on both sides of the Atlantic continue to come together in mutual solidarity to advance the interests of black people everywhere in the world. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the 60 or so years since African countries attained independence, it is true that we have all not always lived up to the early promise of our forebears. Political instability and poor management of our economies have meant that Africa has been described as the scar on the conscience of the world, to borrow the words of a one-time British Prime Minister. Many of Africa's young people have resorted to desperate means to escape from the continent to find a better future for themselves elsewhere. This has been exacerbated even further by the onset of the pandemic of COVID-19 and its ravages, which have affected every country on the planet. Yes, we in Africa have mercifully not witnessed the high infection rates and death tolls that some gleefully predicted for us, but which other countries in the developed parts of the world have suffered. In a population of some 31 million, we in Ghana currently have an active case count of 710 persons, with some 2 million persons tested and 5,556,210 persons vaccinated. Our goal is to vaccinate 20 million Ghanaians, that is the entire adult population, by the end of the year. We will also begin soon the vaccination of the population aged between 15 to 18. However, we have not been spared the harsh economic consequences wrought by the pandemic. Disruptions in global supply chains, slowdown in global investments, significant job losses for businesses big and small, unprecedented volatility of stock markets, tighter global financing conditions, decline in tourism resulting from border closures, and a sharp decline in remittances are but few of the examples of the impact of COVID-19. The lessons are clear. We all fell together and looked into the abyss together. Even as we closed our borders and shut airports, the reality dawned on all of us that we had to rely on each other to be able to get out of the trouble we were in. We've all gone down together. We should all rise together. In particular, for us in Africa, it has given us a good sense of how important it is to strengthen our unity and solidarity. It has intensified in us the motivation, if any was needed, to be self-reliant. That is where we have decided never again to be victims of global vaccine politics or vaccine nationalism. By establishing a National Vaccine Institute, spearheaded by Ghanaian scientists of world repute, to oversee the domestic production of vaccines across a broad range of diseases, including COVID-19. Ghana was amongst the first countries anywhere in the world to put together a medium-term response strategy to address the impact of COVID-19 on the economy and to an outline an economic recovery, revitalization, and transformation plan to build back better and stronger. We have identified the relevant sectors of the economy requiring the needed investment that will help accelerate the rebound and growth of the Ghanaian economy. As was witnessed, in the immediate years before the pandemic struck, 
which saw between 2017 and 2020 our average annual GDP growth rate of 7% is one of the fastest in the world. We call the Ghana Recovery Package the Ghana Cares Obaltampa Program. The 100 billion CD program aimed at stabilizing and revitalizing the Ghanaian economy has two phases. The stabilization phase, which was implemented between July to December 2020, and the revitalization and transformation stage, which is currently under implementation and will end in 2023. We're focusing our energies on supporting commercial farming and attracting educated youth into agriculture, building Ghana's light manufacturing sector, fast-tracking efforts at digitization, developing Ghana's housing and construction industry, establishing Ghana as a regional hub, and strengthening the enablers of growth of our economy. Investors are optimistic about the Ghanaian economy. We've done the heavy lifting required to transition our economy into a growth economy, and are establishing sustainability and irreversibility. We're spearheading regional integration and cooperation in industrializing in Af Africa, and currently hosting the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Ta Trade Area, AFCFTA, which comprises 54 states with a combined GDP of some three trillion United States dollars. It does look like, despite the very real difficulties posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, we in Ghana are doing some things right and sending out the right signals. Last year, 2020, Ghana recorded foreign direct investment of some 2.65 billion United States dollars from 279 projects. For 2021 alone, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center recorded the foreign direct investment of 973 million United States dollars from 173 projects for the first three quarters of the year, with large ticket projects in the pipeline to boost FDI flows by the end of the year. The construction of a data center in Accra, the Accra Marine Drive investment, the trade fair redevelopment project and construction of an e-commerce park to service trade and logistics companies. Ladies and gentlemen, easily the most ambitious program we in Ghana have mounted in our dealings with the African diaspora was the organization of the year of return in 2019, which was a major landmark spiritual and birthright journey, inviting the global African family home and abroad, to celebrate the cumulative resist resilience of all victims of the tr transatlantic slave trade who were scattered and displaced throughout the world in North America, South America, the Caribbean, Europe, and Asia. It brought some 750,000 members of the global family to Ghana in that year. Ghana's connection with the African diaspora predates our independence. During our struggle for independence, our leaders reached out to the African diaspora. Notable amongst them was Kwame Nkrumah, educated in the 1930s at the famous black university, Lincoln University in Philadelphia, who was to become the first president of the free nation. Some very well-known diasporan Africans came to live in the newly independent Ghana. George Padmore, W.E.B. Du Bois, Maya Angelou, Bill Sutherland, to name but a few. In 1992, Ghana adopted the Pan-African Historical Theatre Festival, Panafest, as a cultural vehicle for bringing Africans on the continent in the diaspora together around issues of the arts and culture. To coincide with the 50th anniversary of the country's independence in 2007, and in commemoration of the 200th anniversary of the abolition of the North Atlantic slave trade, the Joseph Project was launched to provide an avenue for healing and cultural exchanges between Ghanaians and the African-American community. 
The year of return held in 2019 has become the pivot around which engagements with the diaspora and African family and Ghana revol revolves. The follow-up project, Beyond the Return, seeks now to create opportunities across several sectors of the economy and provide a platform for sustained dialogue amongst people of African descent. Currently, we are creating platforms for adoption of legal frameworks in key sectors to drive diaspora engagements. This has culminated in the Homeland Return Bill, on which we are currently working. The Homeland Return Bill rec recognizes Ghana's moral and spiritual obligation as an African nation to facilitate the return of diaspora Africans to Ghana and the motherland and to initiate the legal and regulatory processes for integrating them into Ghanaian society. When enacted, the law will provide the much needed regulatory and practical changes to improve the requirements for the acquisition of Ghanaian citizenship and permanent residence by diasporan Africans. Indeed, in the year of return, I granted citizenship to 126 members of the diaspora community in Ghana of African Americans and Caribbeans. All of us gathered here should never forget the famous admonition of the iconic Jamaican reggae star Peter Tosh when he said, and I quote, don't care where you come from. As long as you're a black man, you're an African. Unquote. We must work together to change the African narrative, what has been characterized too often by a concentration on disease, hunger, poverty, and illegal mass migration. Let us all remember that the destiny of all black people, no matter where they are in the world, is bound up with Africa. I'm an incurable optimist and believe in our capacity to reach these goals. And in doing so, I'm comforted by the words of the great Marcus Garvey when he said, and I quote, the black skin is not a badge of shame, but rather a glorious symbol of national greatness, unquote. My delegation and I are grateful for the warm reception we have received here in Atlanta. Now is the time to engage each other positively and imbibe in ourselves a deep consciousness and understanding of the goals and history of the African peoples. To, to, together, we can make Africa a place to be proud of, for we must all be aware by now that ultimately, all black people everywhere are judged by the success of Africa. May God bless the National Black Caucus of State Legislatures, black people everywhere, and us all. And may God bless Mother Africa, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention.